What's up everyone, Tech Mindset here. In today's video, we're doing Ground Floor Builds Episode 1. After a recent trip to Micro Center, I came away with a new hard drive, a new CPU cooler, a new SATA SSD, and a new NVMe C drive SSD. Let's dig in. Once I get this thing open, I need to first identify which of the two and a half inch SSDs are the 500 gigabyte ones, which means I have to tear these ones apart until I find it. And as it would turn out, the first one I pulled out, I couldn't quite see the text under the SSD tray, but the next one I could, so that made it a little easier. This first one I pulled out is a one terabyte SSD. For future reference now, I'm gonna put a label on it that it's one terabyte. Boom. On to the second drive. Like I said, I could see the text in there, so I knew that this one was one drive I can pull out. The old drive was a 500 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo, and I'm putting in a two terabyte 870 Evo. Once it's back in place, I just snap it down to lock it in. And for good measure, I'm gonna label this one two terabytes. Now it's time for the six terabyte hard drive. The problem is, is that I have four hard drives in my computer right now, so I have to find which one is which. It didn't look like it was in the back, so I have to turn it around now, remove the door, and then visually inspect the drives in there. The first one wasn't it, but the second one was indeed the one terabyte drive. Now I just have to figure out how to get it out. My case is a Fantex Enthu Evolve first generation. I like the options of drives that it gives me. However, this part with the hard drives is a little bit of a pain in the butt once all the wiring is in place. These thumb screws on the back are a pain to get out. And to give me more space, I need to take out the GPU. The GPU is an RTX 3080 that I was in a queue for about one year before I was finally able to buy it. Now that I can see clearly inside, that is the one terabyte drive I need to take out. The thumb screws that hold in the hard drive holders are really hard to get to behind the wires, so I have to move a lot out of the way just to get to them. But I succeed and there's the drive. A little dusty, but it works just fine. I was really hoping to pick up an eight terabyte drive, but they didn't have them in stock at Micro Center. I went with a six terabyte instead. Once it's screwed in, I just have to secure it inside the case. Then I can secure it with the thumb screws and I'm good to go once I reconnect SATA. Which is actually something I forgot to do in this video. And it wasn't until about a day or two later when I realized I wasn't seeing the six terabyte drive. So then I had to figure out the problem and plug it back in and then it worked. The six terabyte drive is now storing project files like these. With the SATA drives out of the way, I can now tip this thing on its side and then take a look at the NVMe drive next. My motherboard is an X570 Tai Chi by ASRock. And on this board, I need to remove these three screws to reveal the NVMe drives. Once I get this open, I think I forgot to actually take off that tape. Whoops. One of the screws I already removed held the NVMe drive in place, so all I have to do is pull it right out. Depressing fact, the new drive is two terabytes and costs less than half as much as the original Samsung drive there that was 256 gigabytes. I mean, it's great now, but putting it into context, it's a little depressing. My first MP3 player was a little expensive and it was only 512 megabytes. I'm removing the tape here so that the cooling pads contact the NVMe drives directly. And then I'm going to screw the plate back in place. 
Next step is to finally remove my Kraken X62. It's been a really good cooler, I have no complaints. I don't know how long they last, but this one's pushing somewhere around 7 or 8 years, so I don't want to risk it for too much longer. I've always been worried about leaving my computer on for long periods of time because in computers that I've built for old jobs, we used AIO coolers and those died within a couple months, so I'd always been worried about this one, but it's kept going for the longest time, so I have no complaints on it and I really like the RGB lighting that it has. Once the cooler is disconnected from the CPU, I need to get this radiator tray out from the case so I can undo all the screws and remove the radiator. And it's time to take out all the wires. This is the USB that connects to the pump, and the other ones go to the fan controller on the case. With my trusty isopropyl alcohol and coffee filters, I'm going to clean off the CPU cooler before I put it away. With the radiator and fans taken apart, I'm going to store all the parts just in case I ever need to use it again. Now it's time to clean off the CPU. I hit it a couple times just to make sure it's completely cleaned off. It's been a while since I've worked with one of these, but they're just as massive as I remember. I've never had any complaints with these Noctua coolers before. Well, aside from the mounting hardware and actually mounting it on the motherboard. Before I install the cooler, I'm going to take the fans that were originally going to the CPU cooler header, I'm going to move them to a chassis fan header, so that way I can use the Noctua fans in the CPU cooler header. I need to remove the fan so that way I have access to screw the cooler onto the motherboard. I give it one more pass of isopropyl alcohol, just in case. The directions here said to put five dots on it. Why not? I'll just follow the instructions. I'm using Thermal Grizzly CPU compound. With the CPU cooler smushed into place, it's now time to put in the screws. These things I remember were a pain in the butt, but luckily these don't go too bad today. Then I clip the first fan in place. For the second fan though, I need to be careful with my RAM, but first I need to put the clips on it so I can put it on the cooler. I actually made several adjustments here, but I have it above the RAM so it's not contacting and it still fits in the case. Next I plug both fans into the Y splitter and then plug that into the CPU header on the motherboard. With everything done, it's time to put the GPU back in. I can only imagine what an RTX 4090 would be like, jeez. I always struggle with this part because the cables are broken up, they're not all one piece, and there's three 8 pins that need to go into the GPU. Check the fan hub to make sure it's plugged in, push the wires back, and then it's time to close up. And as you can see, the power is on for the computer, CPU fans are running, all the case fans are running, everything's looking good. And to further confirm, I have the BIOS up and I'm able to see the fan speeds. I wish Windows would show the model number of the drives. I had to guess if it was drive 4 or if it was drive 8 that was the NVMe. In the end I had to make a guess and if I guessed wrong I was going to have to reinstall Windows again. I thought I'd do a fun test. I took 100GB of OBS video that was on the NVMe drive that I didn't touch in this video 
and I transferred it to the new two terabyte drive. When I saw 2.4 gigabytes a second, my jaw hit the floor. I bet that would go even faster if the other drive was also a PCIe Gen 4. But 2.4 gigabytes is nothing to sneeze at, you know, I can't complain. And there's enough space and 2 terabytes that I can even use this drive to store my videos on while I'm editing them before I move them back to the hard drive. And that's all for today's video. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with ideas for future videos. I thought this would be a fun video because I didn't have the table space to do this build. I thought it'd be fun since not everybody has the table space to do this to just do it on the floor. If you want to see more builds like this, let me know in the comments below. That's all for this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.